Hello everyone. In this video, I will show you how you can use PyTorch to train a deep learning model that allow you to detect pneumonia directly from chest X-ray images. I will show you how you can use this framework without any abstraction to train a model that will successfully detect and classify these diseases directly from the raw data. If you have no experience with PyTorch or computer vision, this should not be a problem as I will explain everything in this video. Otherwise, you can check PyTorch official tutorials on documentation. They will help you understand everything behind the scenes and get started with this great framework. So, without further ado, let's have a look now. We'll start by configuring the virtual environment that we will work on. And for this, I'm using PPM, which is a very powerful tool that allows you to build virtual environment and package some dependencies. I will start by installing the needed packages. First of all, Torch, then Torch Vision. I will also install Pilo to handle the image data, and then install the usual NumPy, Pandas, and I think that's all. I'm also using scikit-learn as well, so I can add it. And then I will hit enter. I've already installed these packages, so I'm not gonna do it again. And once you have your virtual environment directly installed, you will have a pip file and a pip file.log, and basically these two files specify the dependencies of your project. I'm also installing Jupyter to allow uh, Jupyter Notebook execution. And once you're ready, you can activate your environment by executing pipem.shell and then run Jupyter Notebook. I've already run Jupyter Notebook, so we will skip this. All right, so the data, as I said, comes from Kaggle, so, so you can directly download it from their website and then you can organize the folder to follow the same structure as mine. So I put the data inside the data folder and we will find a train folder inside as well as a test folder. So yeah, with this structure, we can basically start. And to do this, I have fired a notebook and I'm also using a, a GPU powered machine that has a, an NVIDIA 1080 Ti that has, I guess, 11 gigabyte of uh, video memory. So if you don't have a GPU powered machine, you can still use Colab from Google and we can execute this tutorial as well. Okay, so I will start by importing the packages. First of all, I will be importing some basic packages here, like time, copy, blob and then random i'm also importing numpy pandas and then image from pill to load the images i will import also tqdem then pyplot and then train test split from scikit-learn Okay, so now we can import the Torch and PyTorch dependencies. So, Torch, the neural network module. I will import also an optimizer from Torch Optim import Adam. Then I will import the data dependencies from Torch as well. From Torch utils dot data import dataset and data loader. Then from Torch Vision import transforms. This allows me to build augmentation pipelines. Then finally, we'll import the backbone models from Torch Vision models import 
ResNet 18 and ResNet 34. Okay. So now I will load the paths to the data. Basically, I have train data inside the folder train with the subfolder normal. So this will be the normal chest x-ray images. Okay, I can import, load the paths, train, normal, with an asterisk, then train, pneumonia, equal, basically the same thing, okay. So now I have to do the same thing for the test data. Just fix a few things here. Okay. All right. So let's check the data. So for example, train normal looks like this. Okay. Yes, now I can mix all the train data and train paths. So I will define train paths as train normal plus train pneumonia and then test paths as test normal plus test pneumonia. Okay. So I have I, ha I also have to set the labels to the data. So this is quite easy. We can do this. Train labels equal. So this will be zero dot len train normal plus one dot len train pneumonia. We have to do the same thing for the test labels. Okay. So basically what this tells us is we assign the label one to an image if it has a pneumonia, otherwise we set it to zero. So now if we can check the data and its sizes. Len train paths. Len train labels, then do the same thing for the test data, and finally then test labels. All right, okay, so given these uh, variables, paths and labels, we can split the data into train and validation sets so that we can train the model and then validated on the test on the validation data. To do this, I will be using the train test split function from scikit-learn. So I'm defining train paths, valid paths, train labels, and then valid labels as train test split, I'll pass the train paths. So this will be over overridden. Then train labels. And then I will also stratify using the train labels to follow the same distribution of the train data, train labels. Okay. So before starting to build the model, I will define a small function to investigate and check the data. So let's call this function, for example, show random images. This function will take a random image, a random image, a random path to the normal image. Okay, path random normal, we call it by calling the random choice 
from the train normal okay and then path to random let's call it abnormal from chain pneumonia okay and then i'm defining a figure plot dot figure let's set a figure size to 10 10 then i will plot the first one so subplot 1 to 1 ax1 so here i'm opening the image with below okay so i will pass the path to the normal image then i will convert it to grayscale convert to la then i will set the title to normal x-ray and then as you guessed it we will do the same thing for the abnormal image and then here we will pass the abnormal path and then call this ax2 and then we put here abnormal x-ray okay so we can call this function many times at each time it will load some random images okay so i have to fix this yeah okay let's call it another time okay yeah so i have no expertise whatsoever so i cannot really interpret these images but we can state at the end of this tutorial uh, we can check where our model will look inside the x-ray to diagnose and detect the pneumonia problem so let's keep this uh, exploratory analysis now now i will be defining the dataset class from pytorch in order to load the data directly from our folders so let's call this dataset class x-ray dataset for example this class will inherit from dataset so i'll have to define the init method obviously uh, the init method will be passed the paths to the image the labels and a transform function which i will set to none by default then i will initialize the paths then the labels and finally the transform i'll have to return the length of the data set in our case it's the length of the pass and finally i'll have to define the get item method this get item method will receive an index so from this index we can extract a path to the corresponding image then we can load the image we convert it to rgb then if self transform is is defined we call it on the function and finally we load the label so self dot labels and then convert the label to a tensor all right so finally i will return a tuple with the image and the label okay 
Let's now test this data set to check if it's working. Let's say, let's define train data set. I will pass the train, train paths and finally the train labels. I will set the transform to none. Okay. So train data set looks like it's working. You can check its length. Then to check if it returns the tuple, I can do a next iter train data set. Okay. It looks like it's returning a pill image here because I'm not defining the transform function. So it looks like it's working. Okay. Now let's define a model that will take an image in form of a tensor and then return a prediction. So I'm defining my model. I'm calling it, I'm calling it pneumonia net. This model inherits from nn.module. So I have to define in it the constructor first. I will set the pre trained argument to true by default. Then I'll have to super pneumonia net self dot in it because I'm inheriting a class. Okay, so now I'll specify the backbone model as an attribute to my class. So self backbone equal resnet 80, 18, sorry, pre-trained equal pre-trained. Then I will specify a fully connected layer to replace the initial fully connected layer of the ResNet 18. Okay, so I will define it as a linear layer that takes as in features 512 and out features 1 because we're classifying data in a binary classification problem. So we will need a neuron only at the end of the network. Okay, now I'm defining the forward method. So basically the forward method will take a batch of tensors. First of all, I will load the, I will pass the data inside the different layers of the network. So to understand what I'm writing now, you'll have to check the architecture of the model. So let's print it here first. Let's call the ResNet. Okay. So as you see, we have four layers. The first layer is not integrated inside a sub-layer or a bigger layer so we have independent layers here comp1 dn1 relu etc but we have layer 2 layer 3 layer 4 and finally the average pooling and the fc so basically what we'll have to do here is to call backbone dot comp1 x then replace by the other layers bn1 relu and max pool okay then i want uh, i want i don't need to do the same thing for the other layers because they because they are packaged inside bigger layers so I will put, simply put, x1 self model uh, backbone layer 1. 
and then the same thing for the other layers. So you can consider that all this is layer zero, right? So finally, after the fourth layer, I will call the average pooling layer. So basically, this will be called by self dot backbone dot abg pool of x, and finally we'll have to change the size of our data to make it two dimensional so x view so the first argument is the size of the batch and then 512 then finally i can pass this x inside the fully connected layer so x equals self dot fc of x yes and then finally i can return the tensor so i'm gonna remove this okay so now our pneumonia net is ready let's define a, a train augmentation and a validation augmentation pipeline and then we can start training our model so first of all, I'm gonna set the image size. This is the target image size that our transformation pipeline will use to resize the original data. Actually, the original data is quite big, so resizing it to a given shape will increase the speed of the training. So I'm gonna put it to 500 to 500. So now I will define a transform augmentation, a train transform. So I'm going to call transforms compose. And then inside compose, I will pass a series of transformations. So first of all, compose this transformation will receive a pillow image. So first of all, we'll have to transform this pillow image to a tensor by calling the to tensor method then i will resize this tensor to meet the image size then i will normalize the data to match the image net preprocessing So, normalize. Okay, let me just copy paste this from PyTorch documentation. Okay, now I can define the train transform pipeline. So, basically, I'm going to do the same thing here. Okay, so maybe I can add something else here. I can add a small rotation, so it's random rotate, I guess, rotation. So I can specify the degrees to 15, let's say. Okay, so now that our training and validation augmentation pipelines are defined, I can define my datasets. So train dataset is x-ray dataset i will pass the train pass the train labels and then the train transform i will do the same thing for the valid dataset okay so first of all i will have to pass the valid paths the valid labels and then the Best transform. Okay. So now we can start our training pipeline. I'm gonna start by setting some parameters. So first of all, I will like I would like my network to be pre-trained. And given this variable, I can start by defining my model. So 
pre-trained equal pre-trained. Then I will set the number of epochs I want to train my model on. So let's say five epochs. So I can now say and define the train batch size to 16 and then define the valid batch size to 16 as well. Okay, now I can start defining the data loader. Train data loader. So train data loader. So it's a data loader that will take the train data set, a batch size, which is the train batch size. I will set the number of workers to five and I will set shuffle to true so that the data is shuffled at each epoch. And then I will have to do the same thing for the valid data loader. So the valid data loader will take a valid data set as first argument, then the valid batch size, and then I will set the shuffle to false. Okay, now I'm gonna define some handy parameters inside the dictionary because this will help me later when writing the training pipeline. So I will define data loaders as a dictionary that holds the train and validation data loaders. So train is the first key and it points to the train data loader. And then the val is the second key that points to the valid data loader. Okay, I will define some logging steps. For the train, it will be the lane length of the data loaders divided by 10. So actually, what this tells me is that I want to log some information on 10 times inside an epoch so that I can track the different metrics such as the loss or the accuracy or the F1 score, etc. So I want to do the same thing for the valve. Okay. Yes. Okay, then I want to put some information about the dataset sizes. So train equal to len train dataset, and then val is equal to len val dataset. And finally, I will define the batch sizes. So train equal to train batch size and then val equal to valid batch size. Okay, so now after defining this, I will define the criterion, which is low loss that will my, that my network will try to optimize and minimize so that it achieves its target. So I will call it criterion. So in our case, it's a binary cross entropy. So it's a binary cross entropy. And I will use it with logist's loss so that I won't, I don't have to define the, uh, to change the structure of my network at the end. And then optimizer equal to Adam, I will set the parameters to the, to my model parameters. Para meters then i will set the learning rate to so let me put the learning rate here let's set it to 3 e minus 3 let's say okay so i think everything is good here now i can pass my model to cuda Okay, and to check that my model is inside the GPU memory, 
I can launch this command. And I can see that uh, this uh, model takes up to 800 megabytes. Okay, now the remaining thing is the most important one. I'll have to define the training pipeline of my model. So I will build a function called train model. So this function will take will take a model, the criterion to optimize, the optimizer, and then the number of epochs. And finally the device, which will be CUDA by default. So to track the training time, I will start by defining the T0. I will call it since. And then I will say, I will start by defining the best model. And it will be uh, a copy of the model, the original model, state ticked, okay. Then I will define the best accuracy to zero, obviously, at the beginning of the training. Okay, now I will start by defining the loop of my training. So for epoch in TQDM, then I'll specify the range of my epochs, okay. So now I will build a generic pipeline that will be true for the training or the validation steps. So for phase in train or val, if phase equal train, I will set the model to train mode. Otherwise, I will set it to evaluation mode. Okay, so now I can start by defining some metrics I want to plot inside each epoch. Basically the running loss, then the running corrects, let's say. And then I will go through the data loader. So for E, inputs and labels inside my data loader. Okay, let me call the data loader corresponding to a given phase. Then I will leave to false and define len to data loaders phase. Okay. First of all, I'll have to pass the inputs to the device. And I'll have to do the same thing with the labels. I'll have to set the zero grad method to set the parameter gradients. Okay, so now I can make my prediction, set grad enabled. So this will be true if phase equal train. So preds equal, yes, I will call it outputs, outputs equal model inputs and then I will call preds equal outputs dot sigmoid over 0 0.5 okay so now that I have my prediction I can call the criterion which is criterion outputs labels and then I'll have to cast the labels to a float. 
Oh, okay. So now if base equal train, I'll have to make a backward pass, which is loss dot backward. And then call the optimizer dot step to modify the gradients. Okay. So now I'll have to update the running loss. So loss dot item multiplied by the batch size. I'll have to do the same thing with the running corrects. So it's torch sum predictions equal to the labels. Now if I want to plot some information inside the epoch, I can do this by this condition. If the index of this loop modulo the logging step of the phase equal zero and higher than zero, I will compute average loss, which is the running loss divided by i plus one multiplied by the batch size of the phase and then average accuracy which is running corrects divided by i plus one multiplied by the batch size of the phase and then i can print this data so first of all i will print the phase then I will print the epoch, epoch number. Then I will print the loss, which is the average loss. And then finally, the accuracy, which is the average accuracy. OK. And at the end of this loop of a given epoch, I will call epoch loss, which is a running loss divided by the dataset size of the given phase. And finally, the epoch accuracy, which is the running correct that I cast to a double divided by the dataset size. So let's print them. Print so this this is the loss and then the accuracy. Okay. Then I call format phase epoch loss epoch accuracy. Okay. So now if phase equal val and epoch Ac higher than the best accuracy, we set the best accuracy to epoch hack. Then I'll update the model weights to copy, deep copy, model state ticks. Yes. Okay, and finally, 
I can compute the elapsed time, which is time elapsed equal time dot time minus since and I can print it training took time elapsed time second okay now I can before returning anything I can load the best model inside the network so model load state dict best model weights and then finally return the model okay positional argument follows keyword so this is in, in line 19 let's look at this yeah of course I have to define the named argument okay so now everything sh everything should be ready we can start training our model let's do this so train model model criterion and then optimizer course I'll have to specify the number of epochs okay so the optimizer is not defined optimizer of course I'm calling it optimizer okay let's fix this optimizer all right so now our model is training so I will let it and then get back to you when it's done so now that our model finally trained we can check the best performance on the validation data and we can see from the logs that the best performance of the model on the validation data is about 93% of accuracy. And from that point, we can see that the model is starting to overfit. And we see that the accuracy decreases and the loss, validation loss starts to decrease. So, yeah, this function allows us to fetch the best model before it's too late so yeah basically what we have loaded is this corresponding model okay now that our model performs as much as this on this validation data let's see how it does on the real test data so the first now to do this i'll have to load my data and to do this um, I'll have to define a train a data set, a test data set. And to do this, I'll define the test paths. So basically the test paths are glob, glob, then I'll define this plus pneumonia okay okay I can now define the labels test labels equal to the length of each list no yes so zero times the length of this list plus one times the length of the other list okay so test paths test labels perfect now i have to define a test data set 
so x-ray data set I'll have to specify the test paths as first argument then the labels and finally the test transform all right so now I have to define a test data loader which is data loader I have to pass the test data set as first argument then a batch size I'm set it to 32 for example and then I have to set shuffle to false and drop last to false okay now I'll have to go through my test data loader so yeah tensors labels in tqdem enumerate test data loader we leave false and total equal plan of test data loader since I'm also I'm only predicting I will set the gradient to false with torch no grad I will compute the predictions with torch with model tensors that could let's see if this works first okay it looks like it's working okay let's put all the predictions inside the list so we'll have to convert the predictions here first by calling the sigmoid method prediction.sigmoid and then I have to convert it to binary targets predictions higher than 0 0.5 and then all predictions will have to pass them inside prediction we have to put predictions inside all predictions so this will be the predicted values and we'll have to compare these predicted values to the real values from the test data so i will put i will call this y pred it's easier to read and then i will define y true so this will be y pred and then y true is uh, okay so with the set of real labels all right okay so now let's see what we have inside the y pred list so okay we have a list of tensors we can concatenate all these tensors together by calling the torch cat method so by calling it we have okay looks good y pred equal to this and then y true equal to the same okay so y pred has shape 624 and then y true has the same shape as well 
Okay, now we have to convert these vectors to tensors. So y pred numpy. Okay, I have to con pass it to CPU first, of course. Okay. Y pred equal to this. And then y true. I can, I guess, directly convert it to numpy because I haven't passed it to GPU, I guess. Okay. So y pred. I can now convert it and cast it to integers. And I will do the same thing for y true. Okay, so yeah, so y pred, I can now reshape it, and then I will reshape y true as well. Okay, so now we have two clean vectors that have the same shape. So I can compute the accuracy score and I'm gonna do it just now. So from scikit-learn matrix, import the accuracy score. And basically the accuracy score will take as first argument the true targets, I guess. Okay. So it's y true and then y pred. Yeah. So that's it. We got a 76% of accuracy, which is not that bad, but we can do a lot better. So I hope this tutorial was a good start to try experimenting deep learning on chest X-ray images. You can improve this model by a lot of things. You can go through the architecture, for example, and use another model, maybe a, a deeper model with more layers. You can use ResNet 34 or ResNet 50. You can start using other models like DenseNet, uh, DenseNet uh, 1 to 1, for example. You can use the Efficient Net, which is a new state of the art model. You can add more augmentation techniques to uh, handle the variety in the variety in the data and introduce a lot of transformation to make the model stable. You can adjust the hyperparameters and play with them. You can tweak the learning rate, add more epochs or maybe change the batch size. So you can experiment with a lot of this and maybe improve the performance metrics. And if you don't have enough ideas on how to do this, you can check the code section on Kaggle and then maybe uh, check the answers or some good uh, kernels. So you can check the kernels by their hotness or the must vote. That's what I usually do to check good things from the open source community. Okay, so thank you guys for watching. I hope this was a good start for you to try experimenting deep learning and medical imaging. If you found this tutorial useful, don't hesitate to share it, to like this video, and finally to subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching. See you next time.